got my good friend, the bro, the homie, the the bishop elect, the man of God himself, (laughs) the the man, the the legend. We thank God for you, Bishop. Uh, uh, Apostle. I'm sorry, Apostle. (laughs) No, I'm talking about you. (laughs) You the apostle. Man, I'm just a nobody. Nah. Trying to tell everybody (laughs) about somebody (laughs) who can save everybody. All right, <laughs> bro. It's been a minute. People? Yes, sir. It's been a minute. It's been a little while. It's, it's man. been a hot minute. I'm telling you. What man. you been up to, man? I mean, life, life, and life in it. You life know, and life in it as best as I can, man. <laughs> but I'm glad to be back. Uh, definitely more mature. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, I've still got the same hunger. Yeah. Um, but um, trusting God during during this journey. Yeah. Um, as doing what He has called us to do, man. Yeah. Um, as best we can do it. Um, growing, I feel like I'm saying the same thing, but it's just a lot that's been happening, um, that I am grateful for, Mm -hmm. not in the same place I once was, um, spiritually and naturally talk, you know, um, God has, um, blessed us with a, uh, bigger home, Mm -hmm. different things of that nature. You know, um, God has blessed us with opportunities and I'm just grateful because it was all him, you know, cause you can get to a place where. Um, sometimes you feel like um, your work is not paying off. Yeah, um, that's the truth, and it it calls you to question what you're doing yeah. and who you're believing in. Yeah, you know. So, yeah. but I'm grateful um, that I'm in a place that I know that my belief was not in vain, my yeah. labor was not in vain, yeah. my sacrificing wasn't in vain. Yeah, um, because I I promise you. You know, just being transparent because I think it's important that we understand that we are human. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, we're we're, we're human and certain things that happen in our lives, we can't calculate. Yeah. And when they happen, um, you don't know which way to turn. But yeah. I'm so grateful for our Jesus. Yeah. Um, I'm so grateful that he has given us an opportunity to enjoy life. He said in his word that I come that you may have life and life more, more abundantly. abundantly. Right. Um, so um, I'm living in my abundant life and I know that there is more to come. Oh, yeah. Um, I know, you know, even with one faith, y'all, it's been a little minute since it's we've been, been a high. And I think minute. this is our um, first episode together yeah. as far as doing the radio thing. Yeah. You know, in, in one room. So I'm in excited about that. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, man, life is good, man. How's everything been with you, bro? Man, Whew. So the last time that, you know, y'all seen us, man, it was 2021. Uh-huh. 2021. 2021. Uh, that was almost two years ago, which yes, is insane sir. to think about. But right. the last episode that we recorded was in November. Um, and then after that, we had our uh, night of worship. And, bro, that night was just amazing. It was Absolutely. incredible. Um, I, you know, from that night, I was like, I want to do more nights for worship. I don't want to do podcast stuff no more. <laughs> I just, I just want to create atmospheres for people to come and worship God, bro, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really has been my heart. So, I mean, haven't been doing that yet. <laughs> it's coming, so though. It's, it's coming. coming. It's coming. It's coming to but, a city um, near you. You know, man, ever since then, man, we just been on a tear. Um, you know, we've been we started going to a new church. Um, and honestly, when we did the night of worship, we had been there for like maybe a few months. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, that church home became really family and Honestly, man, it's been a place of healing, a place of restoration, a place of uh, just God restoring um, our faith, not just in um, each other or in him, but, you know, our faith in humans, our faith in the church and our faith in pastors and leaders. Um, So, I mean, if I'm honest, bro, like, man, we've been on a we've been we've been doing a lot. (laughs) You know, the Lord has blessed us with this uh, beautiful house uh, really unexpectedly. Mm. Um, and you know, I started working, man. I've been working, 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 working like a my friends joke, joke on me all the time. So I've been working like a Jamaican because <laughs> <laughs> I got so many jobs, uh-huh. but uh, <laughs> but uh, man, I just be working hard and I'm be doing my thing, and I'm just you know, really grateful for where God has us and and the place that He has us in, man. It's just like you said, man, life been life, and yeah, at the sir. same time, you know. You know, me and my wife, we welcomed our fourth child. Y'all. That's four. Ain't I clapping? <laughs> this is it. This is it. This is I it. I don't know. Bro. I don't know. He said that. No, I'm serious. Two, uh, three babies ago. I did. But this, <laughs> <laughs> this one is it. This one is definitely it, bro. I'm, I'm making the appointment today. Let me I see. Got- <laughs> 
to go get it cut, <laughs> snip, snipe. We ain't getting it severed, but we definitely, <laughs> but we definitely going to get it, something going, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah, but um, but yeah, man. I mean, it's just been a, it's just been a blessing, and honestly, trying to figure out how to. Um, parent for children um, Still love my wife unconditionally Amen. Um, And also I would just say Just trying to um, be the best uh, Christian possible man And then like I said uh, My light went out but it's all good <laughs> But like I said man like going back to um, Like our church home Our church family man like I've stepped into Leadership there Come on, um, leadership. I've stepped into some Yeah I've stepped into some stuff man <laughs> Yes sir <laughs> Not in a bad way y'all yes, sir. Don't, yes. don't interpret it don't misinterpret that Don't interpret the stuff, the stuff. <laughs> All right, Catch my stuff. drift <laughs> <laughs> Yes sir But uh, but yeah man during this time man, I, I feel like I've learned so much About um, being a shepherd mm. uh, Being um, a pastor uh, of people um, while stepping into leadership and honestly i mean i lead the production team at our t- at our church and you're like man how can you be learning about pastoring and shepherding and production bro people are people that's right <laughs> that's right no matter what the gift or what the area is people are people that's right um and you know i thank god that he's been able to use me in these areas i mean we had a guy on our team just real quick we had a guy on our team um uh, he had revealed to me that he was going through um, mm-hmm. He had um, prostate cancer mm-hmm. um, We did not know Like he was going through this And like right before he went out um, He was like yo T He was like you know can you pray for me You know I, I've only shared this with a couple people I didn't want everybody to know But I've shared mm-hmm. with a couple people And I just felt God told me to you know to share it with you um, And so he shared it with me I prayed for him And then um, we got on stage As a big huddle um, Which <laughs> what we do in the mornings We have a big huddle um, and, you know, I just started praying um, and, you know, and just the presence of God just fell in that room and he had tears flowing down his mm-hmm. face. Um, and then there was another guy that I was praying with and, and was working with as well. He was crying. He had tears flowing down his face. Mm-hmm. And so um, make long story short, man, he came back um, after he went to surgery, he came back and he told us that the doctors found um, that the, the, the cancer that was on his prostate uh, it was much more worse and much more aggressive than what they thought it was, mm. but they caught it in time, and and they removed it in time. So now he's a hundred percent cancer Come free. On, man. And I'm like, that's Come nobody on. but God, bro. Amen. And I just thank God, like just being able to step into those type of moments to just be um, be available for my people and just you know just be there. So yeah, man, like it's that's we've what, been we've been doing a lot. That's what <laughs> makes being a Christian worth it, man. Exactly. You know, and it kind of goes into what, you know, we're getting ready to indulge in. You know, a lot of people have uh, a lot of misunderstandings about what Christianity is. Right. And, um, you know, just my personal testimony. Uh huh. um, I can come from several different ways. Yeah. um, As far as just not being deserving. Yeah. All the mistakes that I've made Mm -hmm. in life. To know that we serve a God who sent his only begotten son yes. to, you know, wash away our sins yeah. um, and know that that pressure is not on me. Yeah. You know, because uh, for those that are not familiar of what Christianity is or who our Christ is, we're Christians because we simply follow Christ. Yeah, that's it. And we follow Christ because he came to redeem us. Yeah. He came to heal us. He came to give us answers within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are, you know, uh, we're dealing with things that we're continuing to look for answers. And you're not going to find it in other people and other things. It's not a specific place. Yeah. But it is in a person who was all God and all man at the same time. That's right. And because he was all God and all man at the same time, he was sinless. Yeah. Um, so he had to sacrifice himself for the good. So, you know, there is hope, you know, I was watching, uh, <laughs> it's funny. I was watching, um, Ty Tribbett's tiny desk uh, oh, yeah. the other day oh, yeah. and I, and I saw that he said something and it was very simple, but it's powerful because I think that a lot of times people miss it. There is hope. Yes. There is hope. Yes. You know what I mean? With everything that is going on in the world, we cannot control yeah. We can't control the things that are getting ready to happen. We can't control what has already been written. Yeah. Because if you ever look at the word of God with an open heart, mm-hmm. 
and you look at certain things, there are a lot of things that are coming to pass that has already been prophesied. Come on. There are a lot of things The um, Jesus says, he said, you'll know that I'm near because there'll be wars and rumors of wars. wars. That's right. The seasons are, are not where they need to be. Things mm-hmm. are happening. You know, mm-hmm. people will be lovers of themselves mm-hmm. and different things of that nature. And because of that, you know, um, there, it, it, it causes a, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It causes um, a panic. Yeah. It causes a panic because you're trying to figure out, oh, I need to have this and mm-hmm. I need to have that. And mm-hmm. how am I going to, you know, because even just touching on and I'm not going to get deep into it, you know, with this thing in Silicon Valley with the yeah. money. Yeah. You yeah. know, and people's money being frozen. People yeah. are now scared. Like, mm-hmm. is it safe to put my, where can I put my money? Am I going to have enough? Right. You know what I mean? You you think about things about like the Great Depression and things yeah. that happen, you know, yeah. things like that. There is hope in Jesus Christ. There is hope. And, um, you know, um, that's one of the reasons why I really depend on him, um, because it's not because I I recognize is that I don't have it all figured out, number one, Mm -hmm. and that I'm not going to have everything that I want or need, Mm -hmm. rather. Um, And he's all he the Bible says he'll supply all All of of our need according to his riches and glory. So regardless of what comes our way, Mm -hmm. regardless of what happens, Mm -hmm. The Bible, uh, David said, I never see the, the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. bread. Come on. So it's never going to be a time, regardless of what time we're in, that we're going to have to suffer like everyone else because our all of our hope is in him, bro. Yeah, that's the facts. You know, it's funny because, like, um, I, I'm thinking of the scripture where um, I believe Jesus said, you know, God allows the sun to rise on the just and the unjust. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when we look at these seasons and these Times that we're dealing with, you know, eggs are expensive. Things are going just crazy. Gas prices are high. You know, groceries are just crazy expensive, bro. That's a building of itself. Like, you, that's a car note. Yes, like, sir. That's this day and age. Yes, that's sir. a car note. Um, and interest rates are continuing to go high. But it's just like what you said. There is hope in Jesus, bro. Yeah. When I when I when I when I talk about like us moving into this house, like that is a testimony of itself Come because on, you know, in the midst of this entire interest rates increasing and things going the way that they're going, you know, God opened this door for us to move into this house um right before the, the um the, right before the new year. Mm-hmm. Which is insane. Like when we saw this house back in November um of twenty what, twenty twenty two? Man, it's crazy. Like <laughs> we in twenty twenty two. I don't even know what year we <laughs> right. <laughs> But like when, we, when I saw this house in November, um, my wife she fell in love with it, and I was just like, man, I don't know if we're gonna be able to get it because we don't have everything that we need. Mm. Like we don't even have the funds, we don't have everything ready, and it was just like the way that everything kind of just went. Like God opened this door for us to move into this home so fast, bro. We moved into, we saw this house in November. We moved into it in December. Wow, yeah, bro, that's a cool that turnaround. does not happen that's a cool often. Turnaround. And the way that God orchestrated this whole entire thing, the way that He, the way that He moved, um, it, it 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 goes to your point that there is hope for anyone that's like listening and and they're trying to figure out like, well, you know, I would love to do X, Y, and Z. Man, God already has the plans in place. He is the master orchestrator. He knows what you need and when you need it and how to supply it to you. The thing is, you just gotta have faith. You just gotta have trust, and you gotta have hope that He can and He will come through for you and I think that's the biggest thing for me is that you know I learned that in this season with this house I learned that in this season with church I learned that in this season with everything that we're doing yes, sir. is that you know I have this hope that is built on nothing less than Jesus's blood on, and righteousness and that's what I you know I lean on like the song says I dare not trust the come sweetest frame but I wholly lean on Jesus name that's 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 a part of my personal testimony. Yes, sir. Because, you know, like like you, you know, we were both deep in sin. You yes, know, there sir. were things that we were involved in before we came to Christ. Yes, sir. For me personally, I was <laughs> I won't say that I was like out there, out there. But a lot of my um, I would say a lot of my struggles came from trying to be accepted by people. That's right. And I think that because of the fact that I, I struggled with acceptance, I struggled with uh, self-esteem. Uh, I would do things to just act out because of the fact that I wanted to be accepted by people. I wanted to be accepted by the popular people. I wanted to be um, seen by people. And that even bled into 
um, I would say the start of my ministry stuff sure. because I wanted to be seen by Bishop. I wanted to be seen by different people. I wanted to be seen. And so you would be doing things just to be seen, but I'm not doing things to be <laughs> honoring and to glorifying mm-hmm. God. Come on. And so I, I had to wrestle with that fact and I had to wrestle with that when I had came to a, a situation where, um, you know, where back in 2019, God had um, allowed me and my wife um, the opportunity, afforded us the opportunity to move to Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And we moved um, and we were like, you know what, this is a great move. But at the same time, the Lord told me that our season at this one particular church was up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, <clears throat> all right, God, I hear you. We out. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is that what happened was I was trying to hold on mm-hmm. to things. I was trying to be seen. I was trying to, you know, still be in the limelight. And God was like, no, it's time for you to go. And the problem is, is that when you try to hold on to something, when God tells you to go, God will either make you give it up forcibly by force, by violence or whatever. (laughs) I'm being completely honest. Or you can make the option to just let it go. when God says, let it go and just live in peace. And I think that because of the fact that we try to hold on to um, our relationships hold on to different things. It caused so much chaos yes, sir. in our lives yes, in 2019. The next thing you know, 2020 hits. We all know what happened in 2020. It was like all hell broke loose and Satan blew his hot breath all over the world. <laughs> and we got everybody in the left and right was getting COVID. And it was just like things were just going crazy. Everybody was losing their minds. Yes, sir. And it was just like in the midst of all of this, it was like God was still keeping me and my family, Amen. even though there were times when I felt like we were about to lose it all. Like the job that we moved down to Charlotte for, I did not get the job. So now I'm like, oh, God, what are we going to do? And God is just like, stand still. I got you. He was like, I got you. Fight your, I'll fight your battles for you. And lo and behold, you know, he blessed us with the job. He blessed us with another opportunity. Um, and then this opportunity afforded me the ability to come to actually move back home mm. to where we are um, back in Clayton, Clayton, North Carolina. Shout out Clayton. But anyway, yes, yes, <laughs> but sir. we moved back and when we moved back. Um, we were like, you know what, God, we're looking for a church home. We're looking for something, something somewhere. You know, we, we feel like we are in a new um, place. We have, I don't say a new revelation. I feel like, you know, I feel like we have fresh uh, revelation or fresh, um, a, a fresh anointing or a fresh perspective. I think that's the better word. A fresh mm-hmm. pr- perspective um, is just being that uh, we believe that <clears throat> we should be worshiping with all people yes, sir. Um, of all kinds. Yes, sir. Um, we should be worshiping together um, as the body of Christ um, and as it's reflected in heaven. And so, like, I told my wife, I was like, we need to find a multicultural church. It was like, I refuse to go back <laughs> to what we came from. Yes, like, sir. you know, where God brought us out of us, we need to, we need to go there. Um, and so, lo and behold, where the Lord brought us and where he sent us to, um, it has been confirmed so many times in so many places um, and in so many ways that, you know, this is where God has sent us to be at. Amen. And I thank God that he has planted us where we are. Amen. And I was having a conversation the other day um, with, um, with, <laughs> with my pastor. Uh, and honestly, he's like the campus pastor there, but I was having a conversation with him and he was like, TJ, what's the difference between, um, old, one faith then and one faith now? It's like, where do you see yourself mm-hmm. now? It's like, you know what? When we first started one faith, it's like my heart and everything in it. I was just, I was, I had good intentions. Mm-hmm. I was really, I was really, I had really good intentions starting one faith, but I'll be completely honest with y'all. Like I was serving and I was, I was pouring out of a hurt. In a broken vessel. Oh wow! And I think that when you when you pour out and when you do that out of a broken vessel, you you realize that okay, there's areas in my life where I need to be fixed. There's areas in my life that I need to be repaired, and where I need to be made whole. Come on, man! And so the difference between then and now is that I'm not serving or I'm not coming out of a hurt place. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm 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 really pouring out of a place of wholeness and of healing, um, and of restoration. Um, these are the things that I've said in the beginning of this episode because of the fact that that's where I'm coming from in this place. It's like when me and Mark is like when we first when he first got here and we dapped up, he was like, bro, we've matured so much. Yes, sir. And honestly, from you'll see it and <laughs> you'll hear it from the last episode till now. Um, you know, the maturity that has taken place in both of our lives, Absolutely. you know, where God has taken us, where God has placed us. Um, I feel like, you know, it is such an, 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 an indicative um, I would say imprint of God's hand on our life. Absolutely. And it just shows that, you know, he loves us and that he cares for us and that he would allow us to go through so many things um, only to just bring us back to him. I would, um, I'm a second that because you said something trying to fit has been a disease in yeah. my life. Yeah. 
instead of allowing God to place me where I belong. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it took time. It took those hurt situations. It took things or people turning on uh, me um, Mm -hmm. to realize that I don't have to fit because he's brought me in here for a purpose. And the right people who are connected to me will be connected to me. Yeah. And I'm grateful, you know, because um, it it has increased my faith. Good. It has increased Good. my faith. You know what I mean? We have to understand this, people of God. We have to understand that faith is a currency. Because you mentioned something about, you know, um, your home, you know. And the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to, to please God. Come on. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Y'all forgive me if I'm a little bit too church. Come on here. Like, you know, that's kind of my upbringing. But go ahead, bro. That's more crazy. But you have to understand that our currency as believers um, allows us to get things because now I'm not going to get in too much detail of how I got my home. But the way that I got my home, it let wasn't me just, illegal. It wasn't illegal. <laughs> He didn't have to sell no It is, but you know. <laughs> but at the end of the day, y'all, no, but at the, I'm serious. How the house yeah. that I got. Come on. And what my situation was mm-hmm. did not make sense. Mm-hmm. And for when that happened, it took my faith to a whole nother level mm-hmm. because I realized, I realized that None of this is man's doing. Mm. It's not even my doing. Mm-hmm. But because he sent me, he sent us and he chose us. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Okay. Because he has chose us to do his will, he's not going to leave us or forsake us. He's not going to leave us hanging. And I realize and I recognize when we're in his will, mm-hmm. He'll, he'll give us the desires of our heart yes. because our desires matches his mm-hmm. You know, and and honestly, y'all, this is what one faith is about being one with God, being holy with God, being being holy, being one is being able to trust who God is. Yes. Fully. You know what I mean? We're you know, it it was a point in time where, you know, I was and I'm being transparent. I can't believe I'm being this transparent, but it was a point in time where, you know, I wanted to preach everywhere and I wanted to get gigs and different things of that nature. But God would not allow it to happen yet. Come on. But now there is coming a season where my voice has to be heard. That's right. So now I'm in a season of preparation. I'm in a season of, okay, God, what do you need from me? Mm. When's the last time you asked God that question? Mm. When's the last time you said, God, what do you need from me? Because I find it so much easier when you get to a place and you're asking God, okay, God, what do you need from me? Next thing you know, you'll walk into doors that you didn't even know that you can walk into. Mm. That's good. That's good. You'll have opportunities you didn't know that it was you were capable and you realize you're amongst the best of them. So people of God, what you have to understand is your faith in Christ is so important. It is so important to stay focused on the goal. It is so important to stay focused on um, just trusting in that, because like I stated earlier, y'all. Like I stated earlier, you cannot, you don't have all the answers. You won't have all the answers. You won't have it all figured out. Um, And because you won't have it all figured out, put your trust in your creator and really have an open mind and open heart about who he is and what he does for you. This is one faith and we are back in effect we are back. We are back. <laughs> we have it. I'm trying to keep it going. <laughs> For those that don't know, I was I was just on my hands and knees. Uh huh. He was praying before the <laughs> I Lord. I was praying before the Lord. Uh huh. And I struggled getting back up. It's all right, <laughs> you know. But you got back up because a just man. Uh huh. Come on, falls, falls down. Uh huh. But he gets back up. But again. he gets back up again. Come it on. Maybe seven times, but he'll get back up. <laughs> but eight. he get back up again. Come on. Come on, somebody. Uh, but uh, nah, man. Uh, so you know, it's. I'm glad to be 
back with you, brother. You know, I'm glad that we are able, we're more mature, and I'm glad God has healed you. Oh, yeah. I'm glad for your blessings and much more to come. Uh, I'm glad for, you know, the impact we're getting ready to have. Um, oh, yeah. It's important as disciples. It's important as we do ministry to, you know, let the world hear about Jesus because there is going to be absolutely no excuse. None. When he returns. You can't say that you didn't hear about him. You can't say that there ain't no real people because we truly love God, man. We truly love him, man. We truly, truly love God. Love there is nothing that we can do without him. And we're telling you from our own personal testimonies, the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our, our testimony. testimony. Come on. And just like Job, and I know we're, we're wrapping up, but, you know, because you have to re recognize something. The enemy tries you because he wants to prove, especially the believer, he wants to prove that you only love God because of the things that he's blessed you with. Mm. But God said, no. He's a worshiper in heart. Job is a worshiper at heart. He's not just worshiping me because of the things. So go ahead and try him because I know his heart. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting to me, and I'm not going to get into it because I'm a preacher, but it's very preach, interesting. Preach, son, preach. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting to me because God is, first of all, God is all knowing. Mm -hmm. So God had to provoke, watch this, God had to provoke the enemy to go after Job to Ooh. increase his faith. Oh, come on. All right. Now. Because he already All knew right his response. Come on. He knew, he knew exactly how the enemy would respond. Mm -hmm. But he, he wanted to increase Job's faith. Come on. Because he loved Job more. Mm -hmm. That's really big. That's real. We want faith, y'all. That's real. Bro, we got five minutes. You about to make us preach a whole five minute sermon <laughs> about Job. <laughs> But you know what? And this, this is it's so good you went there because, you know, honestly, I've been, um, you know, I've been stuck in like Genesis chapter one and chapter mm. two. And I know people are like, man, that's so basic. You're so, you're mm -mm. so whatever. Bro, there is so much in Genesis chapter one and two mm -hmm. that I don't even think people realize it's there. Yeah. Like you, you learn about life. You learn about leadership. You yes, learn sir. about delegation. You learn about all these different yes, things. Sir. It's all there. Yes, like, sir. It's. It's there. Yes, sir. Um, and not only do you learn about that, but you learn the most about the character and the nature of Satan. Mm. Bro, I, like from the last episode that we did, the last episode we did with your bishop, that was the very last episode that we did. Mm -hmm. And he came and we talked about hell. Mm. And bro, that episode, it's probably like one of the most played episodes that we've had wow. ever. So like intentional plug y'all go and check that episode out it's really good <laughs> yes indeed <laughs> but um and you know we've been talking about getting to part two from that one you know we've been out for about a year and a half so like uh, y'all just bear with us we'll bear get, with us we'll get the part life two. is life and life is life and we'll get the part two when part two gets there but, <laughs> but the amazing thing that i've learned like from that moment like i did an intentional study of the whole bible from cover to cover i just read everything from cover to cover studied everything mm. and the thing that i learned the most about this I would say the first pass of reading through the Bible like mm -hmm. that was that I understood fully the nature and the character of Satan mm -hmm. and I think that goes you know that that over that that goes unnoticed by so so many people mm -hmm. you know we read the Bible to try to figure out who Christ is and and you know or even trying to figure out you know things that we have questions about you know why you know why do bad things happen to good people mm -hmm. and, and, or different things like that everybody has their own reasons for reading the Bible but I mean, honestly, this wasn't even my purpose for reading the Bible. It just jumped out to me mm. how much of a deceiver Satan is. Very much. How so. much of a manipulator and how he's not really a person, but he's really a presence. Yes, and how sir. he can come in and, and, and turn things That's good, TJ. and turn people. And, and really infiltrate people's thought process. That's good, TJ. Bro. That's because and because he's the author of confusion. Come on. He's the author of confusion. So anywhere there is confusion, anywhere there is division, you have to recognize that Satan is in the room. He's in the room. And he's that smooth. And I think because we... We, we, he's not a millennial demon. He's not Come a on. generational Z Come on. demon. Come on. He has been around for centuries. Come and on. I think it is his, y'all have to understand, it is his responsibility to turn you away from Jesus. That's right. It is his responsibility to turn you away from what the instructions of God, mm -hmm. the principles of God. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you know, um, 
that's where a lot of people get lost. But this is why we're here. This is why we're doing One Faith. It's simply because uh, we want to, as we are evangelists, um, as we do the will of God, we want to be able to share the gospel and be impactful. We want to invite you to Christ and give him an opportunity. Um, just give him a, have an open heart. It's, it's not about the knowledge of things because there are certain things that you can only understand by faith. Mm -hmm. You won't understand it intellectually. Mm -hmm. You would only understand it by faith. So as we're wrapping up, I'm going to let my bro close it out. But please understand that we are here again in full effect, one faith, and we are ready to spread the gospel as we always do. And we're going to do it until Jesus comes, because once we go into once we are ratchet up, you know, there'll be there'll be no more preaching at that. There'll point. be no more. They'll just be worshiping and praising and enjoying life. So I hope you guys enjoyed this first little episode. Not little. I ain't gonna call it little. This first <laughs> big episode to much bigger episodes. Um, please stay tuned. Tune in with us. Uh, next week is yeah, it going to be or yeah. okay mm -hmm. tune in with us next week and uh, yeah let's keep rocking hey listen everybody listen we have an amazing series that we're about to kick off if you didn't get any of the vibes that we were talking about just now we are going to be talking about you know what, what was it? why should i be saved why should why christ why christ why did I choose Christ? Why did I choose? Why Christ? do I choose Christ? And so it's like you know we we kind of gave our little personal testimonies a little bit. Um, I mean we can really go longer, mm -hmm. but you know for for time purposes and you yes, know sir. that everybody has things that they're trying to do <laughs> in <laughs> life. But it's like you know we want to really pour into um, people in this season um, as to why you should be following Christ. There are so many reasons why you should follow Christ. For one, the biggest reason why you should follow Christ is because he first loved you. Come on. Um, and like I said, Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, I mean, there's so much in there that you can learn about Christ, that you can learn about God, you can learn about yourself, that you don't even realize just how good God is and how good he has been to us. That's and right. so with that being said, like with this new series coming up, I want us to really lean into the fact that God is so good. And not only is he good, but he's a good Lord and he is with us throughout the entire thing. And, and not only that, but like you have a reason why to follow Christ. And it goes way beyond um, what you even imagine or think. Our prayers that you will come to Christ from the series, our prayers that it reaches so many people. And our prayers that, you know, it's not for us to be seen, it's not for us to get the glory, it's not for us to get the limelight. We only care about that stuff. What we care about is ushering in the presence of God in your life so that you can encounter Christ, so that you can believe him. There are, we're going to talk about things. We're going to talk about things from a tough standpoint. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about things apologetically. We're going to talk about a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you the ultimate goal is for you to come to Christ, those who are not in Christ. And even those who are, who are in Christ and may not know some stuff, we're trying to enlighten you on some things. We're trying to bring you up to speed because, you know, you can't <laughs> you can't continue to survive off of off of milk. Yes. Sir. I was about to say something else. You yes, can't continue sir. you can't continue to nurse off of God. You have to get off of the uh what uh what the prophetess Leandria Johnson said. I will not say that. But she said <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> but you need the meat is what Paul was talking about. You need the meat. You need the fullness. It's time for you to step into the fullness. It's time to step into the meat. It's time to step into the maturity of God. And that is our intent with this whole entire series. So y'all be good. God bless y'all. We love y'all. And y'all have an amazing and wonderful day. Yes, indeed.